welcome to Ganesh Institute channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss how we can expand a forest lease if continuous intervals are not given to you. So what does it mean? Let me tell you with an uh, example. You can see your function doesn't have only one value. In fact, it has two values for two different functions. If x is lying between pi, minus pi and 0, then the value of function is minus pi. And if x is lying between 0 and pi, then the value is x. Now in that case, what you can do to have the Forest series expression? So in this case, you need to split your minus pi to pi interval or any of the interval into these two intervals and integrate accordingly, okay? I'm telling you how. So first of all, what you need to find out? A naught as usual. Usually, uh, what we have learned so far is the formula for A naught is 1 by pi minus pi to pi fx dx, right? But here, if you see, your fx is not from interval minus pi to pi. Your fx is minus pi dx if the value of the interval is from minus pi to 0 and it is x if the value is from 0 to pi. Alright? So this is your expression. This is the slight difference in between continuous intervals and discontinuous intervals. So now what you have got? Integrate as usual. So minus pi dx or dx it is x, right? Limit limit minus pi to 0 plus for this x square by 2 limit 0 to pi right so what you have got here upper limit if you place 0 if you put 0 in place of x then 0 and if you put minus pi because minus for lower term lower limit then after minus pi and x is also minus pi right then after upper limit minus lower limit is 0. So this would be minus minus cancel minus pi square plus pi square by 2. That means minus pi square by 2 pi. That means your A naught is minus pi by 2. Alright? Now for A n, what you can do? So what's the expression for A n? Do you know? Do you remember? It is fx cos nx dx, right? But that was for minus pi to pi. Now if again you split your function, then it would be, firstly your fx is minus pi cos nx dx for interval minus pi to 0. And it is x cos nx dx for interval 0 to pi. Alright? Now, if you solve this expression, what you will get? See. For this, minus pi is here. For cos theta, it is sin theta, right? Sin nx by n. Limit minus pi to 0. Then after, Plus, if you use by parts, first function as it is, integration of second minus derivation of first function, which is 1, and integration of this. So, this is, my, for sign, it is minus cos, right? Upon n, that would be n square, and you cannot take it further because now you have got 1. Again, you will take differentiation of 1, that would be 0, right? So for this, the limit is from 0 to pi, right? Now solve it, 1 by pi, upper limit minus lower limit. So if you put 0, sin 0 is 0. If you put pi, sin n pi, sin multiple of pi is always 0. So this is gone. Now for this, if you put pi, sin n pi is again 0. If you put 0, sin 0 is 0. Now only this term is left which would make it like cos n pi by n square minus cos 0 by n square. So this is 
here I told you in our last video that for cos n pi the value is minus 1 raised to power n if n is even then you will get plus 1 and if n is odd then minus so minus 1 raised to power n by n square minus 1 by n square you can take n square common so your e naught this your value of a n is 1 by n square pi minus 1 raised to power 1 minus 1 raised to power n minus 1 this is your a naught a n okay now for b n what it is minus pi to pi f x sin n x dx right that means and 1 by pi as well this is the formula but the interval is from the value of fx is minus pi so sin nx dx if the value is going from minus pi to 0 right and it is x so x sin nx dx if the interval is from 0 to pi all right now similarly extend it what you will get now 1 by pi so minus pi integration of sin x is minus cos nx by n right then after limit from minus pi to 0 here if you apply by parts so first function as it is integration of second minus cos nx by n minus derivative of first which is 1 integration of this so minus sine so that will make it sine nx by n square right and limit 0 to pi right now expand it so this is if you put 0 minus minus plus cos n pi by n right if you put 0 so that would be cos 0 okay minus 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 is plus now lower limit see I have I am cancelling these minus just to make sure that everything is right so now minus lower limit so pi cos minus n pi that would be plus right because cos minus theta is plus cos theta okay now here upper limit so pi this is minus cos n pi by n and if you put 0 then 0 multiply this is 0 minus lower limit here sin n pi sin n pi is 0 always and sin 0 is 0 so just ignore it all right so you can see what you have got now so you have got 1 by pi pi cos 0 is you can take pi common so cos 0 is 1 1 by n this is minus 2 cos n pi is minus 1 raised pi n pi n you can take n common as well so your bn would be pi is cancelled with pi 1 by n is common so it is 1 minus 2 minus 1 raised to pi n all right now you have got all of the Fourier constants so according to Euler's formula let me grab a tester so according to Euler's formula you can see here value of fx is a0 by 2 plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos nx plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity sin n sorry p n sin nx right so now substitute all these values a0 by 2 so if you divide this by 2 you will get the value of fx as minus pi by 4 plus a n, a n is this, so if you take 1 by pi common, sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity, 
1 by n square minus 1 raised by n minus 1 cos nx plus dn is this. So sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by n 1 minus 2 raised minus 1 raised by n sin nx. Right? This is your for expansion. Now, you have done so far the first part, find the Fourier series expression. Now to calculate second one, you need to think what you can put in place of x. So you can see the common point, the discrete point is 0. Let's put x as 0. Now I'm telling you the very important thing here. If you need to find out x the value of function when function is having discontinuous points in such a way then the value of function you know if it would be equals then we can say that yes take let's say for this interval value of fx is 2 and I told you that find out the value of fb then it would be 2 because it is equals right but what if there is no equal sign everything is in inequality and you need to find out the value of function then that would be at any of these points or at any any of discrete points the value of function is half the value of function at left hand limit that means less than b if you are finding it b plus value of function at the right hand limit all right so if you apply this formula so value of fx at f0 would be half of, so less than 0, at less than 0 the value of fx is minus 5 plus more than 0, so it is x and we are putting x as 0, so nullify this, you have got the value of fx as minus pi by 2, right? Now substitute here, minus pi by 2 equals minus pi by 4 plus 1 pi pi sigma n is equals to 1 to infinity, 1 by n square, minus 1 which power n, minus 1, cos, if you put x as 0, cos 0, cos 0 is 1, and if you put x as 0 here, sin 0 is 0, so it is gone, take it here, pi by 4, in positive, minus pi by 2, this is 1 by pi, now see, this interval from n is equal to 1 to infinity has two things, either odd or even, right? Either the value of n would be even or odd. If it would be even, so minus 1 raised to power even would be 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So for every even number, you will get the value of this as 0. But for odd, if you see, I am expanding it for odd terms only. So if you put 1, so 1 by 1 square, every time when you put odd, this would be minus 1, minus minus, plus 2, so minus 2, okay, then after minus 2 by only odd number, 3 square minus 2 by 5 square and so on, right? So you are taking, if you take minus 2 common, 1 by 1 square, 1 by 3 square, 1 by 5 square and so on. This is minus pi by 2. If you take LCM, sorry, minus pi by 4. Now take these, if you cross multiply, this pi here, minus 2 here. So minus is cancelled with minus. This is what pi square by 8. And you can see this was what we were supposed to prove. So we have got it. So, I hope you understand this video. In this video, we can see that we have discontinuous points. We need to just split the function accordingly, okay? If you like my video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until my next video, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.